Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back for a discussion, a little bit of a Q&A discussion we're going to have today starting off in the garage and then we're going to do some driving in our 2021 ESS Boosted Mach 1. I've been getting tons and tons of questions in the comments about my thoughts on what is better. Okay, a centrifugal supercharger, it could be the ESS, it could be a Pro Charger, it could be a Fortec, it could be any of those top brands, but in comparison to a TVS or a twin screw blower, so like an Odin supercharger from VMP or the classic Whipple that is tried, true, proven, and makes a ton of horsepower. So today, we're gonna try to answer some of those questions that everybody out there has. All right, because a lot of you guys are actually new to the channel, we're actually closing in very quickly on 40,000 subscribers. I wanna thank everybody out there that is hitting the subscribe button and turning the notification bell on to stay up to date with all the Mustang content. But for everybody that is new, so this is a centrifugal supercharger. This is the ESS kit. Now there's a ton of pros with this kit versus the other brands out there. Essentially, this is kind of like a turbo head unit almost, but it's belt driven. We'll discuss it further on the road, but the way that it works basically is it builds boost in a linear fashion. So we gotta keep in mind what transmission choice do you guys prefer? Because they're gonna feel different. Honestly, at the end of the day, a automatic is gonna feel a little bit different than a manual, obviously with boost. So we're gonna talk about a root style twin screw or TVS type blower that would normally sit up here that sucks in air in a little bit of a different way. It builds boost a lot faster, but you know, what are the downsides to one of those kits versus a centrifugal? And a big one is going to be IT heat. All right. Generally with some kind of a blower like I've got right now, you're gonna have better IET um, recovery. It'll still get hot when you're doing your pulls, but the recovery, at least as far as my experience with this kit, is it's extremely fast. So on my 2019 Mustang, I had a VMP Odin, okay? To replace the intake manifold, it was a traditional root style blower, it was a TVS. If you go the Whipple route, you get a twin screw, and they, they operate in a similar fashion to give you boost uh, very quickly down low. You're gonna have to fight the car, fight traction, but you're gonna get a lot of power from the get-go, and a lot of people like that, especially with the manual transmission, which I have. But IETs are also gonna be a major concern here, so you're gonna run hotter, and your recovery time is going to be uh, longer. Let's pretend that you pull it down, you want more power. You're gonna heat soak faster depending on the product that you have. Okay, so in my experience, I think a Whipple cools off a little faster than some of the others. So that might be a good option if you're looking for something down low as far as power with pretty good heat management and recovery. But they're still gonna get hot when you do pull, 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 and you drive aggressively. They're still gonna get really warm and toasty. They do a really good job these days about cooling themselves down pretty quickly, but from my experience with the centrifugal is the recovery time is faster. I'm just gonna use that term from now on. A root style blower is that the blower itself sits on top of the heads. Okay, it sits on top of the engine and it creates a lot of heat and it just cooks itself to death. But the centrifugal blowers sit off of the engine. So you don't have to worry about heat as much. Now, anytime you're spinning up the air, you're gonna create more heat going into the engine. That's just the way that you know physics and science work. But as far as the unit itself, it's gonna operate cooler sitting off of the engine. Let's do a pull right quick. 3,800 RPM, 64 degrees, 60, 59, 63, let's hit it. Very fast, all right, let's go back. Let's go back down to a legal speed limit. So 76 is what I saw, and now it's immediately coming down. So again, 59 over here, we're at 68 over here and dropping. So very fast recovery. But the elephant in the room though, the one thing, the major thing that we need to talk about, it depends on where you want the boost. And that's gonna be the kicker here, guys. That's what you're gonna really have to battle with internally and really sleep over is where do you want the boost to come in? With this particular car being a manual transmission, a handling car, with all the goodies and everything that the Mach 1 offers, I 
tint. I kind of like the centrifugal route because it makes the car more of like a driver's car. I get to really push the car to feel it. So the RPMs build, it builds boost, it feels very linear, okay? It may not be the fastest thing at the drag strip, but as a street car, this is a lot of fun. Now, if we pull it down, obviously that's gonna reflect how fast boost comes in, so on and so forth. But with the top mount style blower, you're gonna experience boost very quickly, okay? So maybe like 2,500 RPM. So the difference between the two might be 1500 to 2000 rpm difference when the boost starts to come in but is that really worth it to you do you want it all down low have to fight the car possibly for traction because depending on your power level you may you may have a major issue with that we're talking about big horsepower car so i'm at 735 horsepower this will still break the tires loose but not as bad as if the boost were coming in a little bit earlier so I get to, I guess what I'm trying to say is I get to enjoy the car and the boost is stay in it with more confidence on the street on an unprepped surface. Type supercharger, man, that could really be like an hour long conversation. We don't have time for that in this video. It really is gonna come down to where do you want the boost? Is it worth it, uh, you know, between the price difference between the two? Because centrifugals are significantly cheaper, especially with this kit. It's just, it's priced perfectly, in my opinion, perfectly. Especially this day and age where everything's getting like more expensive. The ESS supercharger is the perfect price for the amount of power that you get from it. The bang to buck is there. If you go with the other type blowers, the top mount blowers, it is going to be more expensive. So you could get into a Century blower for two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 cheaper depending on what you're buying. I don't know, man. I really don't know. I mean, I like them all. I don't think that there's, you're going boost at the end of the day. So I don't think that there's a wrong answer, whatever you pick. But if I have to wait another 1500 RPM for the boost to come in and it comes in more of a, a linear fashion and I don't have to fight the traction as bad, it's more usable power in my opinion, and I get to save thousands of dollars, this might be right up your alley. Again, I, I can speak for no man's wallet. No man's budget I can speak for. That's completely up to you and your family and, and, and your savings account. It's so tough. It's so hard. For me, I think that I really like the centrifugal. Time will tell on the track how this actually performs compared to some of the other options out there. But, uh, but this is tough because price, traction, IETs, still get the horsepower. Um, it's, it's a great feeling even with the, the manual transmission. Now here's something else that we gotta talk about though between the manual and the auto. Remember, when you floor it, the only time that a centrifugal might hurt you with an auto is from a dig. But if you're rolling and you mash that pedal down, what's it gonna do? It's gonna downshift to the high RPM. You're gonna be in your peak power band that's suitable for both the centrifugal and the roots type blower. So it's kind of, apples to apples at that point a little bit there might be a little bit of a torque difference uh the top mount blower is going to maintain a certain boost level where these kind of build 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 so i really i don't know but with the manual that's really what it's going to this is really a discussion for the manual guys where do you like it i want to know in the comments what do you think what's your favorite I think it's fun that I've got to experience all the different types of boost out there, and I'm really enjoying this one. But that's not a knock on the other types out there as well because they all perform so very well, and they're so much fun. All right, so so we're gonna wrap it up in just a few different categories here. Number one, I think, is gonna be an IET discussion. So with a centrifugal supercharger, it sits off of the blower, where the roots type sits on top. It replaces your intake manifold, and therefore, uh, you have a heat problem. TVS generally runs a little bit hotter. You get more of a punch down low versus like a twin screw, like a Whipple, for example. With the Whipples and the TVS of these days, they are honestly pretty efficient. They recover pretty quickly, but in my experience so far with a centrifugal blower, is that 
it still doesn't hold a candle to the recovery time of the centrifugal. So that might matter to a lot of you guys out there, especially if you're racing the car, you wanna do multiple passes at a drag strip, or maybe you're on a road course and you're doing uh, lengthy sessions. So heat is gonna be a big factor here. The performance of how these superchargers uh, continue to perform, how the longevity of the power uh, before we have to let them cool down significantly. So with heat out of the way, let's talk about cost. In my opinion, that's gonna factor in where do you wanna spend your money? You could potentially get into a centrifugal supercharger for two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 cheaper compared to a TVS or twin screw type supercharger. There's just less materials, uh, there's less that they have to produce, and they just operate operate simpler. Now the ESS kit, for example, on the Mach 1 is priced right. With this day and age, with everything getting you know more expensive and supply and demand and all this craziness that we're living in, the ESS kit is like the supercharger to have as far as bang to buck at this point. Hit up Brevin at ESSTuning.com if you want a smoking hot deal and let him know that I sent you. Shameless plug, sorry. Guys, I'm not getting commission off of this. I just want you guys to be able to save money because I think that in this day and age, it is significant. The more money you save, the more you can mod, the more you can have fun. Family is important, number one. So as far as where boost comes in, with a twin screw TVS type blower, it's gonna come in a lot faster. TVS is gonna possibly come in a little Little bit arguably faster than a twin screw. There's also Edelbrock supercharger out there and there's probably some other brands too that I'm forgetting about. But anyway, it just depends on your setup. You know, your pulley combination and so on and so forth where it ramps in. My experience with the Mach 1 on this engine with the Gen 3 Coyote, with this blower, I experienced the pull start to come in around 3,500 RPM or so. It's it's just more of a, a linear pull. It's just more of a linear pull, which I actually like and that's going to lead us further into the discussion of traction management and uh, usable power on the street. Especially with big power, generally with the TVS and twin screw type blowers, uh, you're gonna have to fight the car a little bit. The TVS twin screw type blowers might excel and probably will on a prep surface because you're getting a lot of that boost down low. In my experience with the Mach 1, having you know the handling pack wheels and all the other aero bits and everything we've done to the car, it is a grip machine. So that does play into a factor a little bit. But in my experience, having owned a 2019 Ford Mustang GT with the Odin Supercharger, I get a lot better traction out of this car and usable power because I can stay in it with more confidence. I can put my foot into the floor, hold on, and I'm not fighting the car back and forth. And it's just safer and more predictable and more confidence inspiring in my opinion. And I think that we can all agree that adding another 100 pounds to this already heavy car is probably a bad idea. But with a centrifugal, it's a lot lighter. So this system has a lot of billet and silicone parts and the whole kit weighs like 42 to 44 pounds as advertised or something like that with the G3 kit. Anytime that you can save weight is always, you know, going to be a benefit. How hard is one over the other to install? And honestly, they're both about the same. They're both simple in my opinion. Because so I really do feel like at the end of this video, you're still going to leave scratching your head like, I still don't know what direction I want to go with. I hope that this video did help some of you guys out there. If it did, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't. I know this has been a talking head video, but this could honestly have been like a seven hour conversation. So let me know in the comments, what do you think? What's your favorite? But I'll see you guys in the next video. God bless all of you. Have a great day. Bye.